I'm Yuri. I'm Jacob. And we're going for a drive. The newly redesigned 2019 Acura RDX. Platinum Elite. S-H-A-W-D. Super handling all-wheel drive. And we already know from our last Acura video that super handling all-wheel drive is legit business. And if you're denying that fact, you're a liar. I'm gonna let Jacob get more into the handling when he drives, but here's a little bit of a taste. The biggest new thing with this car is it's got a cool new infotainment. Yeah. All right, it's a touchpad that controls a screen that you can't touch. Correct. It's my least favorite thing ever. It's not intuitive to start, but you can get used to it. I hate track pads, touch pads. The new Mercedes A-Class has it. The Lexus has it. This has it, but this one is different because it's got a finite position wherever you click on the touch pad, that's where it clicks on the screen. A what position? Finite. I thought it was true touch. True touch? Okay, well maybe that's what it's called, but finite is how to describe it. Is it? I believe so. All right then. So top left is top left. It makes perfect sense. But it's very tricky to use. It is logical and I did not find it that tricky. However, it took a very long time to get used to it and I'm still not completely used to it. And it's kind of distracting. It's very distracting. But because they use a trackpad, they can put the screen farther up because you don't have to reach to touch it. That's true. Which means you don't have to look down as much or lean in as much. It's like using those keyboards with those red ball mouse when you're in elementary school. You're like, I know how to use a normal mouse. Just give me a normal mouse. I want a normal touch screen. That's normal to me. Do you know what would solve this issue? Uh, a scroll wheel? The Accord infotainment. Yes, okay. If they took out this whole section and just put the Accord infotainment, put this graphic design into the Accord infotainment, it would be perfect. The graphic design is unreal. The resolution is amazing. Except I love everything about it. Except for the reverse camera. Okay, we'll get to that later though. Yeah. Yuri, Yeah. I'd like to interrupt you for a second with all this boring stuff and talk about horsepower and torque. Talk to them about it. This has 272 horsepower and 280 pound-feet of torque. All right, and you can talk more about how that feels when you drive later. Oh, I will. We do have a volume knob and we've got tuning buttons. Buttons, not a tuning knob. But they're not super fast, it's still kind of tricky to use, and if you're actually tuning channels through the touchpad, it's pretty difficult. It is cumbersome, a tuning knob would solve all of those issues. We do have 12 rewinding satellite radio stations that rewind up to an hour, which is fantastic. And when you get out of the car, it actually presets some of those as well. To skip though, you need to click the more button and then start clicking back. So it's not just like an easy thing. You have to do a lot of work to click back. But at least it does rewind. It does rewind and it's once you get used to it, it's very enjoyable. But you know what else this car does do? What? Actually, I don't even know yet. The visors. Okay. Oh, for sure it'll pass. Come on. Here we Three, go. Two, one. Yes. Oh, great job, Acura. I gave that a lot of power. I was worried for a second. Yeah, yeah. So along with the trackpad, we also have a right slider. When you move the right slider, you get the best sound ever, the tambourine sound. It is the funniest sound ever. And it's so loud at a default setting, and you can make it way louder, to the point where it hurts your ears, it should be criminal to be that loud. It is painfully loud at the maximum volume. However, you can completely turn off those sounds, so in, thank you. In settings, system, and then system sounds. That's right. But what's cool about the right screen is you get your map, clock or the music that's playing there's no hard buttons to go to like nav satellite radio or whatever but if you swipe up to the screen and say i'm in my music screen right now if i hard click down it'll throw my left screen to the satellite radio screen there you go if i need navigation swipe down swipe down tambourine tambourine click and now i'm into my navigation so it doesn't have hard buttons but it kind of has hard buttons are we done yet no along with the cool new infotainment that i don't really like the control of i also have a really cool heads-up display Yes, I love the heads-up display. So it's normal, got the speedometer, whatever, you can get your traffic directions through there, but you've got an apps button on your steering wheel. It's the best thing ever. You, it's my favorite heads-up display out of any car I've ever driven. You click apps, and then you've got navigation, phone, CarPlay, Sears Satellite Radio, and other radio stations and stuff like that. You can program it from your infotainment to show up in your head-up display. And the resolution and what it's actually displaying is perfect. The best thing is you can click navigation. It'll go to gas stations, coffee shops, restaurant, fast food. Say you click on one, it'll show you how close everything is and the actual brand names. So, and it's not convoluted. It works perfectly. But you know what doesn't work perfectly is the navigation. Yeah, it's close, but not quite there. So you need to write the letters in the trackpad for what you're searching for, or you could say it by voice command, but it doesn't work well. The writing actually registers what you're trying to search really, really well, but what it displays when you search that item is not the best. And the weirdest part is that this only has Apple CarPlay. No Android Auto, but it's apparently coming. The analog gauges are good. They're great. But what it doesn't have is a speedometer right in the middle. Yeah, I don't care about that. 
I do care about that. And we've got the speedometer on the heads-up display, but when I'm wearing polarized sunglasses, it's very hard to see. We've got the most convoluted trip computer screen in the world. I will 100% agree with that. But then we have other cool things like super handling all-wheel drive screen, which we're gonna test out on Cliche Corner. That is my favorite menu display ever. And we also have a minimal screen. And what does that screen say, Yuri? It says minimal. That's it. Which is the opposite of minimal. Exactly. It should show minimal and then fade away. Are we done with the boring stuff yet? No, one more boring thing. Okay. In the gauges, this has the best intro and outro graphics of all time. It actually does. The Honda company should have that spread across all of Honda and Acura. I wanna see that in like every Civic, everything. That'll make every car feel so much more special. Very true. We've got snow, comfort, sport, and sport plus. I wanna talk about that. Yeah, but I wanna talk about the graphics. Take a look at these. The graphics are They are very so cool. cool. They don't move around, No. but they're really good still frame graphics. Super HD. Might as well do a small cup of Tim Hortons coffee test. Thanks for spilling. Well, Perfect. It passes. And the box test. Box test? 12 boxes. Pretty much the same as everything else in its class. Yo, can you beep any louder, car? Rex test? My dog just wanted to play. All right, now with the majority of the boring stuff out of the way, I'll let you drive and talk about the super handling all-wheel drive that we already know is excellent. Because it's actually the best part of this whole car. Because super handling all-wheel drive actually means something. That's right. For once. Yeah. Not like a GT Other or brands. Sport or yeah. R. <laughs> you said we could talk about the reverse camera later. Luxury cars should not have low-res reverse cameras. 100% agree. But you can see everything very clearly, so I'll give them that much. And the Platinum Elite is the only one that gets a 360 camera. And we got a little washer on the back of the reverse camera. Also only on the Platinum Elite. All right, let's rip it. Full send. It's not bad off the line at all. But when you're on the highway going fast or trying to pass, it's not like super good. You'll still be able to pass exactly who you want to, but you won't be the first one to pass them. This is a two liter four cylinder VTEC and it's completely appropriate for the car. I think they got rid of the V6 because they wanted better fuel economy and I think it's very appropriate. Yeah, I don't mind it. I kept it in comfort the whole time. Sport didn't do much for me. This actually has more torque than the old V6 as well. Nice. And the torque comes on at 1600 RPM, so you pretty much always have turbo. There's not much turbo lag, it's more transmission lag because this is a 10 speed auto. Yeah, but even when you're in the right gear, it's still not like lightning. It's not lightning, no, but this is completely appropriate for an SUV. In Sport Plus, we also have a turbo meter and an accelerometer. You can have that display in every mode, but I like to keep it just in Sport Plus. The turbo gauge is one of the funniest gauges I've seen. It's really impressive, but I don't know what it's actually showing me. There's no PSI, it's just this glowing orb. Yeah, and when you floor it, it goes red. When you're off it, it goes purple. It looks like the Terminator eye, but it is kind of laggy. Are you upset about how laggy it is? No, because it provides no information to me, so I don't really care. So the Platinum Elite is also the only one that gets adaptive suspension. So comfort mode actually makes a difference for the suspension in this car. That's the top trim, right? That's right. There's an A-spec? Yeah, but that's below this. Okay, but what does the A-spec have that's different than the Platinum? It just looks way cooler, that's it. Now that we're at Cliche Corner, time to test super handling all-wheel drive, and it's actually unreal. You can see all the power was at your back left wheel there. Yes. Yeah, None so, on the back right. So what happens with this is that you get a little bit of understeer and a little bit of body roll as soon as you go into the corner. But as soon as you get on the power, the power gets distributed to the rear wheels usually, and the torque gets distributed. So the torque is being sent to the outside wheel and it just throws you right through the corner. It's actually amazing. One of the best handling SUVs I've actually driven. It's a very weird feeling being here because it handles way better than I think it will. Exactly, it handles almost like a car, better than some cars, better than that Subaru Legacy, and probably even better than that Ford Fusion Sport. The Macan GTS. Not better than that, but that was my favorite. This is actually my second favorite, and then I would say the BMW X3. This is like really, really, really good. Overall, the suspension is still really comfortable no matter what mode you're in. Sport Plus definitely stiffens it up. I don't think it stiffens it up enough to justify the Sport Plus. I think you should always leave this in comfort and just enjoy it. Maybe even Sport. Sport is fine as well. I also really appreciate the steering. It is very direct. There's no lag in it. You know exactly what's happening. You feel like you're connected to the front wheels, which is really nice in today's age of cars. I know I already said that this car is very comfortable, but I would also like to address this interior because this interior makes it so comfortable. One of my favorite SUVs to sit in. Yeah, the seating position is really good. You've got that both elbows, hands on the wheel position. This armrest does move forward and it goes up and we got a cool cover for it. There is super soft leather everywhere. And speaking of that cover, there is ash burl wood throughout this interior. It's actually real. Yeah, and it like wraps around the front dash. I've never seen that in a car before. 
It kind of looks like it might attract dust, but it also looks really cool. They knocked it out of the park in here. I would love to see it in some different colors though. The seats are heated and cooled, and these are the 16-way adjustables only in Platinum Elite. Okay, speaking of heating and cooled, where is that stuff located? Right up here, on gloss black. What does this look like to you? Uh, it looks like the Acura NSX. No, it doesn't. That's no, a joke. No, it looks like the Ford Focus. It looks exactly like every Ford Focus. These vents make it look like the Ford Focus. And this center dial looks like this, the volume control on there. The first thing I did was get in like, oh, volume? Nope, that's my dynamic mode. It's huge. Yeah, I mean, the NSX has something similar, but it's very Ford Focusy in this car. You absolutely get used to it, and you do have the weird button style shifter, but you obviously do get used to that as well. Piano black? Piano black, I hate it. For, it grip, is, for gripping onto the shifter? Yeah, exactly. It's in a lot of dust settling points. It's in a lot of touch points. A little bit annoying, but it is there. Yo, one of these days, I'm going to prank you. I'm going to I'm gonna wrap all your wood and your Lexus in piano black. I'm just going to set my Lexus on fire. <laughs> I'd also like to point out that there's leather pretty much everywhere, and it's so soft for your legs, so resting my knees against the sides, the seating is just amazing. Your actual driving position is so comfortable, and the steering wheel as well. The size, shape, and everything about it, the leather quality on it, I love this. How about the back seat room? It is actually very good as well. I got tons of room back there, and with the panoramic sunroof, you get like such a nice view, it feels very nice back there. Yeah, we don't really talk about that, but I'm sure you guys can see it up here. Maybe right here. Yeah. Just a, a little bit of the front there. one. Yeah. This does have lane keep assist and adaptive cruise. They both work pretty well. The lane keep assist is not the best. I think the Kia Genesis Hyundai lane keep assist works a little bit better. It's more forgiving, holds you in the lanes more. This one, when it lets go of the lanes, sometimes it just sends you right out. I do agree with you. But what this does have is great collision warnings. Yeah, you get a gigantic brake warning in your heads-up display and in your gauge cluster. And Acura actually figured out this whole system. They put all of the buttons right here to turn everything off or on. Yeah, the way we like it down in the bottom left corner. This car also has an AccuraLink app where you can control it from your phone and get stats. That's right, so you can start your car, you can actually put a geofence yeah. if you don't trust your kids. So whoever <laughs> had this car before me set like 19 geofences up, so every time I drove I got a notification, it's like, Yuri has left Markham, yeah. Yuri has left Toronto. It's like, okay, yeah, I get it. Yeah, so if you don't trust your kids, it's a good way to spy on them. One thing I forgot to mention about this button shifter, if you have it in drive or reverse and you stop the car completely, you unbuckle your seatbelt and you open the door, it'll automatically put you in park so that you don't kill yourself. That's good, that's safety, because that has happened to people before. Exactly, it's a perfect method to fix that problem. To fix the counterintuitiveness of the design they made. Yuri, you pointed out one thing about the sound system to me. It is a very good sound system. It is. But the logo is ELS Studio 3D. It looks like something you'd find on your 1999 white home PC computer that connects to a modem. Sound Blaster ELS Studio 3D was probably a thing. Yeah, it is a really good sound system, and we've got the Beach Boys radio station on number four on Sirius Satellite Radio. You can actually play along to Beach Boy song with the tambourine. Ridiculous. A ba 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 baran. Also, my fiance said if I don't turn off that tambourine noise, she's gonna jump out of the car. So yeah, well, make sure you disable that. Let's get on to looks, because this looks amazing. Oh yeah, it's absolutely like amazing. The best looking SUV in a while. Uh, yeah, it actually is. The headlights look unreal. The LEDs throughout them, like the actual headlights, not just the daytime runners, they look amazing. Yeah, we've got that cool new Acura grill. Yeah. A lot of people don't like that, but they're wrong and that's okay. Yeah, exactly. You're all wrong if you don't like it. Yeah. That's fine. That's you can have a wrong works. opinion. We have those crazy air curtains in the front that draw air around the wheels to make it more aerodynamic, and they're absolutely massive. I really like the hood bumps. The hood bumps are so cool. I like the side profile as well. Yeah, I just don't like the wheels on this one. Yeah, the wheels are kind of weird, but at least they tried. On the A-spec, you get way better wheels, and I believe you get 20s as well. I really like that chrome edge thing on the bottom. It's kind of weird, but kind of cool at the same time. What, what do they say in the brochure? They called it a super aggressive side sill or something like that. It is pretty aggressive. Super aggressive? Super handling, super aggressive. For chrome, and it's appropriate levels of chrome. I like it. And the taillights are nice. We have Acura lobster claws. Yeah, they're <laughs> a lot nicer than Honda lobster claws, I think. Yeah, and they are LED. They're classier Honda ones. Overall, I think it's a really good shape and really matches the rest of the Acura brand. This is a great car overall, and I would highly recommend actually buying this. Well, this color too. Yeah, so it, this color is a $500 option. It's, it's not as good as Mazda Infinity Reds, but it is very good as well. It is very, very good. We should get to the price though. Hit me with it. Just over $55,000. Well, it's a lot better than I thought it'd be. Exactly, and this is the, the top trim. For a luxury car. This so is luxury, right? This is luxury, Acura 100%. is Honda luxury. That's right, 100% luxury. 
and it's the top trim. With that price in mind, I think the 360 camera is a little more forgivable now. Exactly. This is a really, really good car. So let us know below what you think of the new Acura RDX. Do you like this touchpad stuff or not? Or is it the craziest thing you've ever seen in your life? Do you miss the V6? Are you cross shopping this with something else? Should we have a touch screen or maybe an optional rotary dial? And if you miss the V6, you're wrong anyway, so don't worry about it. And don't forget to subscribe. Patreon.com slash the straight pipes. Notifications. We have a merch store. YouTube sponsor button. What else? Hit the like button. Like button, yeah, we can start doing that one day. Yeah, leave a comment, do everything. And share this video with all of your friends. Yeah, all share of the them. Share the channel with them, make them subscribe, grab their phone, click subscribe. That's right, and the notification bell though. And Instagram video coming soon maybe. Yeah, who knows? Vertical. Vertical video, I don't know. straight pipes. I don't know, we're just rambling we're at just, this point. We're just reaching. Yeah, should I uh, super handle out of this one? Yeah, so.